it's about time we get into the Goddard. We are going to be learning tonight from a very important book called Feeling is the Secret. And to be quite honest with you, that's all you need to know. <laughs> Feeling is the secret. However, Neville Goddard is going to tell us in this book, which has only four chapters, exactly how feeling works as a frequency and why it's so important to the reality that we create. And this is the projected reality. This is the reality we experience every single day, but it's also the reality within how we identify ourselves. Because if we don't get that right, if we don't identify ourselves as we truly are, we create out of imbalance and misunderstanding. That's a problem. That's what a lot of people are doing right now. They're reactively creating. Well, in this four-week series, we're going to do a chapter a week. We're going to learn about how to create for the inner world and also for the outer world. Feeling is a secret. Chapter one is law and its operation. Chapter two is sleep. Chapter three is prayer. And chapter four is spirit and feeling. Tonight we're going to be covering law and its operation. I'm going to stop periodically to just expound on what's being conveyed. It also helps because Neville Goddard kind of spoke in a little bit of an old timey way and some of the uh, turns of phrase might be a little hard to understand, so I might clear things up from time to time. But this is a launching pad for us to get into the material and also for me to just talk from spirit about, about it so that you guys can understand it. Are you ready? Chapter one, <laughs> law and its operation. Here we go. The world and all within it is man's conditioned consciousness objectified. When Neville says objectified, it means made into an object. In other words, physical reality, something you can touch, something in your reality. The world and all within it is man's conditioned consciousness objectified. Consciousness is the cause as well as the substance of the entire world. So it is to consciousness that we must turn if we would discover the secret of creation. And creation is just another way of saying manifestation. Knowledge of the law of consciousness and the method of operating this law will enable you to accomplish all that you desire in your life. Armed with a working knowledge of this law, you can build and maintain an ideal world. Here again, everything is you pushed out. Consciousness is the one and only reality, not figuratively, but actually. This reality may, for the sake of clarity, be likened unto a stream which is divided into two parts, the conscious and the subconscious. So the consciousness is this umbrella of our spirit, and it consists of two parts, really three, but two parts he's discussing here, which are underneath this umbrella, conscious, the conscious, and the subconscious. In order to intelligently operate the law of consciousness, it is necessary to understand the relationship between the conscious and the subconscious. The conscious is personal and selective. The subconscious is impersonal and non-selective. The conscious is the realm of effect, while the subconscious is the realm of cause. These two aspects are the male and female divisions of consciousness. The conscious is male. The subconscious is female. The conscious, the male aspect, is our thinking man. It is that part of it. Uh, that part of us that desires, that has dreams, that envisions, that thinks on these things. The subconscious simply receives this, again, not selective at all. The subconscious receives these ideas of the conscious, the male, and gives birth to them into the reality. The conscious, this male aspect, generates ideas and impresses these ideas onto the subconscious. The subconscious receives ideas and gives form and expression to them. In other words, the subconscious creates them. It is the subconscious that manifests them. By this law, First, conceiving of an idea, and then impressing that idea, conceived on the, on the subconscious, all things evolve out of consciousness. And without this sequence, there is not anything made that is made. Let's read that again. 
By this law, first conceiving an idea and then impressing the idea conceived onto the subconscious, all things evolve out of consciousness. And without this, there is not anything made that is made. Nothing shows up in your world unless it goes through this process. The subconscious does not originate ideas, but rather she accepts as true those which the conscious mind feels to be true and, in a way known only to itself, objectifies the accepted ideas. Let me break that down because that's a little bit convoluted. The, sub the subconscious doesn't come up with the ideas. Again, that's the thinking aspect. That's the conscious. What the subconscious does, like a wife, like a womb of creation, she receives what the conscious mind feels to be true. This is an important distinction. And in a way known only to the subconscious, she objectifies or creates these accepted ideas. I love that. In a way known only to the subconscious. So many times we get in our own way when we're trying to manifest something. We're trying to understand how it works. We speak out what it is we want and then we call back the blessing. We try to manhandle and take control of the process, but the subconscious knows how to do what the subconscious was built to do, just like a woman knows how to gestate. A woman knows how to give birth. That's what a woman does. And that's what the subconscious says. We don't need to worry about how, mechanics. Let the subconscious or the universe do that work. Therefore, Neville says, through his power to imagine and feel, and through his freedom to choose the idea he will entertain, man has control over all of creation. Control of the subconscious is accomplished through control of your ideas and feelings. Control of what's being given birth to. Control of what's being manifested. That belongs to the domain of the intention, the desire, and the thinking. The mechanism of creation is hidden in the very depth of the subconscious, the female aspect or the womb of creation. The subconscious transcends reason and is independent of induction. It contemplates a feeling as a fact, existing within itself, and on this assumption proceeds to give expression to it. Whoa, 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 whoa. The subconscious transcends reason and is independent of induction. It contemplates a feeling as a fact, a fact that exists within itself, and on this assumption proceeds to create it. The conscious thinks it. The conscious envisions it. And then the person or the consciousness feels it. And it's that feeling that transmits the idea to the subconscious who then gives birth to it. The creative process begins with an idea and its cycle runs its course as a feeling and ends in a volition to act. Ideas are impressed on the subconscious through the medium of feeling. You have to understand that. You can do affirmations all day long. You can walk around listening to edifying audibles, reading books, but if you don't have a complimentary high vibration feeling, if you're not actually running the frequency of that which you seek to become or seek to create, the subconscious never receives the transmission. The subconscious never receives that message and the subconscious does not create it. No idea can be impressed on the subconscious until it's felt. But once felt, be it good, bad, or indifferent, it has to be expressed. It has to be created. Feeling is the one and only medium through which ideas are conveyed to the subconscious. Therefore, the man who does not control his feeling may easily impress the subconscious with undesirable states. By control of feeling is not meant restraint or suppression of your feeling, but rather the disciplining of self to imagine and entertain only such feeling as contributes to your happiness. The man who doesn't control his feeling, the woman who doesn't control her feeling, who's running around the planet like a free radical, bumping into things and reacting, road rage, upset, depressed, aggrieved, unhappy, is out of control. She's out of control in her feeling. And it's the feeling that's impressing the womb of creation. It's that feeling that's causing her to experience negativity the next day, the next week, because everything is just her pushed out. You see, he also says it's not about repressing your feelings. It's not about 
restraining your feelings. It's about indulging your feelings. We all have periods of pain. The difference between pain and suffering is that pain happens in a moment or it happens in an experience. Suffering is a choice. We choose to stay in the pain. We choose to work around the pain. We choose to elongate the pain. Therefore, we choose to feel and signal the pain. It's a choice. Control of your feeling is all important to a full and happy life. Never entertain an undesirable feeling, nor think sympathetically about wrong in any shape or form. Do not dwell on the imperfection of yourself. Do not dwell on the imperfection of others. To do so is to impress the subconscious with all of these limitations. What you do not want done to you. Do not feel that it's done to you. Do not feel that it is done to another. This is the whole law of a full and happy life. Everything else is commentary. Do not feel that it's done to you. Do not feel that it's done to anybody else. Never entertain an undesirable feeling nor think sympathetically about wrong in any shape or form. This reminds me of those times in my life where I'd have altercations with people or disagreements with people, and then I'd spend days, sometimes weeks, sometimes months afterward envisioning that conversation. Oh, God, if I had just said that, oh, I could have won that argument. Oh, if I just did that, or how dare he do that to me? Playing it over and over, creating suffering for myself and creating a world for myself. Don't think on these things. Instead, think on good things. And here I want to turn to scripture to tell us about the kind of things that we should be thinking on. Philippians 4, 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Of course, it's hard sometimes because life can be hard. And our narratives, of course, are going to reflect what we're experiencing. But do not indulge the lower vibration. Do not indulge the negative vibration. As soon as you notice you're doing it, and it's typically because you're feeling it at the same time. If you're tense, if you're anxious, if you're unhappy, if you're sad and you notice that you're feeling that, do not indulge it. Instead, turn away from that and think on these things that are lovely and just and pure. This is work. This is the work of the life. Nobody gets out of here without doing this work. You want a new planet? You want a new job? You want a new relationship? You want a new body? You want a new wellness? Think on these things. Learn how to think on these positive things. Every feeling, Neville says, makes a subconscious impression and unless it is counteracted by a more power feeling of an opposite nature must be expressed. This is important. Every feeling you have signals the subconscious and she begins to give birth to it. However, when you notice you are entertaining negative thoughts, you can supplant those negative thoughts with positive thoughts thoughts, positive feelings, and the stronger of those two energies, he'll go on to tell us, the stronger of those two energies is what the subconscious will receive. Neville says the dominant of two feelings is always the one expressed, meaning is always the one that gets created. I am healthy is a stronger feeling than I will be healthy. To feel I will be is to confess I am not I am is always stronger than I am not. What you feel you are always dominates what you feel you would like to be. Therefore, to be realized, the wish must be felt as a state that is rather than a state that is not. And we have to repeat this. Listen, lean in, receive this. What you feel you are always dominates what you feel you would like to be. Therefore, to be realized or actualized or manifested, the wish you have for yourself must be felt as a state of feeling that already is, rather than a state that is not. Sensation or feeling precedes manifestation and is the foundation upon which all manifestation rests. Feeling is the foundation upon which all manifestation rests. If you don't get your feeling in alignment with what you want to create for yourself, you will not create the desired effect. Be careful, therefore, of your moods. 
Be careful, therefore, of your feelings, for there is an unbroken connection between your feelings and your visible world. Your body is an emotional filter and bears the unmistakable marks of your prevalent emotions. Emotional disturbances, especially suppressed emotions, are the cause of all disease. To feel intensely about a wrong without voicing or expressing that feeling or off-gassing that feeling is the beginning of disease, which is dis-ease in both body and in environment. Therefore, do not entertain the feeling of regret. Do not entertain the feeling of failure for frustration or detachment from your objective results in disease. That's kind of a convoluted sentence. Don't indulge failure. Don't indulge frustration. Don't indulge detachment from what it is you want. Don't live outside of the outcome because this results in dis-ease. Think feelingly only of the state that you desire to realize. Feeling the reality of the state sought and living and acting on that conviction is the way of all miracles. Let's hear that again. Feeling the reality of the state sought, meaning as if you were already in it. I already have it. I'm already doing it. Feeling the reality of that and living and acting on that conviction is the way of all miracles. All changes of expression are brought about through a change of feeling. Here again, expression is creation, manifestation. All changes in what you're manifesting are brought about through a change in your feeling. A change of feeling is a change of your destiny. All creation occurs in the domain of the subconscious, the womb of creation. What you must acquire then is a reflective control of the operation of the subconscious. That is, you've got to control your ideas and your feelings. Neville goes on to say, chance or accident is not responsible for the things that are happening to you, nor is predestined fate the author of your fortune or your misfortune. Chance, accident, this just happened to happen to me? That is not dictating your fate, nor is it predestined, nor is it written in stone what will happen to you. You are creating in this moment and in this now. The power is yours. Everything is just you pushed out. Your subconscious impressions determine the conditions of your world. The subconscious is not selective. It is impersonal and no respecter of persons. The subconscious is not concerned with the truth or the falsity of your feeling. In other words, it's not going to say, hey, Crystal, you're feeling kind of low. Are you sure you want me to create that? Hey, Crystal, you're feeling pretty angry. Are you sure you want me to manifest from that? The subconscious is not a respecter of persons. She doesn't ask whether the there's truth in the feeling. She just accepts it as a lover would and then creates it. The subconscious is not concerned with the truth or the falsity of your feeling. It always accepts as true that which you feel is true. Feeling is the ascent of the subconscious to the truth of that which is declared to be true. Because of this quality of the subconscious, there is nothing impossible to man. Because the subconscious is always poised to rise or to ascend to that which we are thinking and feeling, we can create miracles in our lives if we just get this principle. Whatever the mind of man can conceive and feel as true, the subconscious can and must objectify or turn into reality. Your feelings create the pattern from which your whole world is fashioned. And a change of feeling is a change of pattern. Are you getting it? A change of feeling is a change of pattern, which is a change of destiny. The subconscious never fails to express or manifest that which has been impressed upon it. The moment it receives an impression, it begins to work out the ways of its expression. It accepts the feeling impressed upon it, your feeling as a fact existing within itself and immediately sets out to produce in the outer or objective world the exact likeness of that feeling, just like a woman will create a baby in the likeness of the father and the mother. The subconscious sets out to do exactly that, create or manifest that which is the likeness of your feeling. The subconscious outpictures these things to the very last detail, whether or not they are beneficial. To impress a subconscious with a desirable state, 
You must assume the feeling that would be yours had you already realized your wish. In defining your objective or what you want to create, you have to be concerned only with the objective itself. The manner of expression or the manner of manifestation or the difficulties involved are not to even be considered by you. They don't matter to you. That's not your job. That's the universe's job. To think feelingly on any state impresses it onto the subconscious. That's your job. What do you want to create? What do you want to manifest? Can you conjure a feeling complementary to that? Can you feel yourself as already having it? If you can do that, the subconscious takes care of the rest. Therefore, if you dwell on difficulties, barriers, or delay, the subconscious, by its very non-selective nature, accepts the feeling of difficulties and obstacles as your request and proceeds to produce them in your outer world. I want to stop here and just give you an example of how this is true. I used to teach in one of my classes, one way to know if you have a block to prosperity or a block to abundance is get yourself into the receiver position. This usually calls for some deep breaths, a quiet room, some time to yourself, settling the mind, body, and spirit. And when you're in that receiver position, imagine yourself as feelingly as you can winning the lottery, maybe $60 million or $100 million. And then pay attention as you're feelingly experiencing this to how your thoughts flow from that. People with no obstacles and no barriers immediately start feeling a bit excited. Oh, I'm going to do so many things with that money. I'm going to pay off my mortgage. I'm going to start a trust fund for my children. I'm going to donate it to this charity. I'm going to save all the animals. I'm going to donate it to Greenpeace. I'm going to give it to my family. They get so excited. They're creating from that energy of the bounty. People with obstacles, though, to prosperity, people with obstacles to abundance, immediately start thinking about everything that can go wrong. Oh God, if I win $60 million, my whole family's gonna wanna take it from me. Oh, you know what? I should definitely get a lawyer if I win $60 million so that they can speak for me. I definitely don't want anybody to know. You start thinking like that. You start focusing on the barriers, on the obstacles. This is what, this is what Goddard is talking about. You're trying to create something, but what you're really feeling as you're trying to create something is the barrier of it is the lack of it. And as a result, it's the feeling the subconscious receives and manifests accordingly. Does that make sense? The same thing with relationships, actually. So many of us think that we want to be in a loving relationship or we want to have home and hearth with somebody else. And when somebody comes along, somebody who's open to it and has no barrier to it, if it's, if it's the right energy and the right match, they don't talk themselves out of it. They embrace what's going on. But somebody with obstacles and barriers to relationships immediately start looking at the person, seeing what they're doing wrong. Mm, I don't know if I like that. I don't think I can work with that. Immediately start seeing all the problems that could arise. And that's what the subconscious receives. Going back to the book, the subconscious is the womb of creation. It receives the idea unto itself through the feelings of man. It never changes the idea received, but always gives it form. Hence, the subconscious outpictures the idea in the image and the likeness of the feeling received. To feel a state as hopeless or impossible is to impress upon the subconscious the idea of failure. And then you receive failure. Although the subconscious faithfully serves man, it must not be inferred that the relation is that of a servant to a master, as was anciently conceived. Again, although the subconscious faithfully serves man or the, the thoughts and the ideas in order to create it, we shouldn't think that this is suggestive of how the ancients taught about husbands and wives. The ancient prophets, Neville said, called it the slave and servant of man. St. Paul personified it as a woman and said, quote, The woman should be subject to the man for everything. you got to love that, Paul. The subconscious does serve man and faithfully gives form to his feelings. However, Goddard says, the subconscious has a distinct distaste for compulsion and responds to persuasion rather than to command. Consequently, the subconscious res resembles the beloved wife more than a servant. Quote, the husband is head of the wife, Ephesians 5, also Paul. 
may not be true of man and woman in their earthly relationship, but it is true of the conscious and the subconscious, or the male and the female aspects of consciousness. The mystery to which Paul referred when he wrote, quote, There is a great mystery. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, and they two shall be one flesh, is simply the mystery of consciousness. Consciousness is really one and undivided, but for creation's sake, it appears to be divided, d divided into two. I have to stop here just being a child of the Bible and fundamentalist religion and remembering these scriptures and remembering how women were always set off to the side. They could never be pastors. They could never be preachers. They always had their role. What Goddard is saying is, no, this is not about earthly relationships. This is about conscious, the thinking man, and the subconscious, the creator of that which we desire. This is a great mystery. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. He that thinketh on these pure things, on these, loveth, on these lovely things, and also feels this, loves himself because he's signaling that to the creator of his reality, and he is improving his life, and he's creating that which he truly desires. The husband loving the wife, who loves the husband, who loves the wife, and so on and so forth. The conscious objective or male aspect truly is the head and dominates the subconscious or the subjective or female aspect. However, this leadership is not that of a tyrant, but of a lover. So by assuming the feeling that would be yours, were you already in possession of your objective or that which you want? The subconscious is moved from love to build the exact likeness of your assumption. Your desires are not subconsciously accepted until you assume the feeling of their reality. I just won $60 million and I can feel it. Oh, all the good things I'm going to do. I can feel myself moving and breathing and acting from the place of believing that I am already that. Your desires are not subconsciously accepted until you assume the feeling of their reality. For only through feeling is an idea subconsciously accepted and only through this subconscious acceptance, is it ever created? Yes, we're going around this a lot, but you have to understand this is the simplicity of the triune nature of your creator being. Triune is conscious, subconscious, and feeling. So simple, not easy. Simple, not easy. It is easier to ascribe your feelings. I love this line, so listen in. It's so important. A lot of you out there, you guys are living this. It is easier to ascribe your feeling to events in the world than to admit that the conditions of the world reflect your feelings. This is especially germane in the States coming up on the 2020 election process, which promises to be more vitriolic and awful than ever. We don't talk about politics in this group for that very reason. But a lot of us get really mad and really activated and really negative. Well, guess what? It's easier for you to ascribe your feeling to events in the world, everything that's happening outside of you, than to admit that the conditions of the world, of your nation, of your community, of your president, reflect your feeling. However, it is eternally true that the outside always mirrors the inside. Quote, as within, so without, end quote. Also, quote, a man can receive nothing unless it is given him from heaven. And, quote, the kingdom of heaven is within you. A man can receive nothing unless it's given to him from heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is within us. The kingdom of heaven operates this mechanical manifestation we're talking about. It all exists within you. Nothing comes from without. All things come from within, from the subconscious. It's impossible for you to see other than the contents of your consciousness. Your world, in its very detail, is your consciousness objectified. It's you pushed out. Objective states bear witness of subconscious impressions. The way you're living your life right now, if you're unhappy, the way you're living your life right now, if you're unwell, it bears witness to how you're feeling. It bears witness to how you're living. It bears witness to how you're thinking. And if you want to change all that, you've got to change what's going on within yourself. Because a change of impression, Neville says, results in a change of expression. The subconscious accepts as true that which you feel is true. And because creation is the result of subconscious impressions, you, by your feeling, determine all of creation. Can I get a witness one more time? The subconscious accepts as true that which you feel 
as true. And because creation is the result of subconscious impressions, you, by your feeling, determine all of creation. You are already that which you want to be. And your refusal to believe this is the only reason that you don't see it. You are already that which you want to be. But your refusal to believe this is the only reason that you don't see it. To seek on the outside for that which you do not feel you are is to seek in vain. We never find that which we want. We find only that which we are. In short, you express and have only that which you are conscious of being and possessing. Quote, to him that hath, it is given. This is also a scripture, and it's the parable of the talents, and essentially Jesus is saying, to him that already has, more is given. And to him that doesn't have any, what he does have is taken away. This sounds very unfair and something that Jesus wouldn't want to do, but what he's talking about is manifestation. To him that has, to him that sees himself as I am, to him that sees himself as bountiful, to him that feels himself as divine and powerful, more will be given every time. But to him that doesn't have, who doesn't feel that power, are you getting goosebumps? To him that doesn't feel their divinity, what that person does have is taken away. More of the same is outpictured into their day-to-day -day reality. Denying the evidence of the senses and appropriating the feeling of the wish fulfilled is the way to the realization of your desire. And here's what Neville means by this. Denying the evidence of the senses. Our senses right now tell us it's nighttime outside. Our senses right now tell me that my bank account is at a certain number. My senses right now tell me that my relationships are breaking or are broken. My senses right now tells me that I'm unwell. I don't feel well. My senses tell me that... My country is broken. My president is crazy. This is what my senses tell me. But what Neville's saying is turn away from what this reality is saying is true. Deny the evidence of the senses. Deny it. And appropriate the feeling of the wish fulfilled. That's the way to the realization of your desire. Turn away from 3D reality and focus on the power within, that which you can create, not knowing how to create it, not even having to concern yourself with how to create it. Just do what he's telling us to do here, what Christ also told us to do here. Think on these things that are lovely and feel in accordance to that, and the subconscious takes care of the rest. Last paragraph, Neville says, Mastery of self-control of your thoughts and feelings is your highest achievement, and it's also your greatest work. However, until perfect self-control is attained, which takes time, so that in spite of appearances, you feel all that you want to feel, use sleep and prayer to aid you in realizing your desired states. These are the two gateways into the subconscious. This leads us to chapter two, which is sleep, and the next is prayer, and he's going to talk about why it's so important to work in the sleep state, because it is the domain and the land of the subconscious. She plays there. She creates there. You sleep tonight, and she's creating what you thought about today and how you felt today, and day after day, this is true, and prayer, too, is not a full immersion into sleep, but it is highly creative. And it allows all these walls to just fall away so that we can get very intentional with the way that we're thinking and with the way that we're feeling. In conclusion, everything is just you pushed out. Everything you're experiencing is mirrored somewhere within you. And the key to unraveling it all, the key to changing your life, whatever that means for you, but also the key to changing your family, the key to changing your community, your country, this planet, the animals. The key to changing that is to work on yourself. Everything is just you pushed out. You are the creator of this experience. I dare say you and I are the very same. We are one. If you are me pushed out, I am you pushed out. And if we want to change this thing together, we got to operate from the kingdom of heaven that dwells within. Can I get an A? Men and amen. Powerful. I love how Goddard uses scripture and gets to the esoteric and mysterious and metaphysical layers well beneath the words and well beneath the way it's traditionally and conventionally 
applied. It's like magic. And when you understand what Paul is really saying, you can understand how these miracles actually work. And Christ said, greater things than I do, will you do? If I can do it, you can do it, and you can do it better. And Christ walked on water. Christ turned water into wine, his first miracle. Christ multiplied the loaves and the fishes. Christ raised a man from the dead. Christ cast out dark spirits. Christ, the Christ said, greater things can you do if you only understand I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. That's you. Anything that follows I am is what you are. I'm hungry. Oh God, I'm fat today. I'm sad. Anything that follows I am is what you are. Change the way you language. Change the way you speak. Change the way you think. Get intentional about it. We only have this one life to live. I honestly think we came here to do massive and good work. And I believe so many of us are getting mobilized on this planet. Can you dig it? I can dig it. I want to do this work. And I can do this work. I'm powerful. Amen. I have dominion. Amen. I exist outside of this third dimensional reality. I exist in all realities. In fact, I exist outside of realities, outside of universal constructs. They mean nothing to my soul, my soul that resides with the creator, my soul, which is an aspect of creator. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You want to change it? Start within. Join me this year at the 2019 Bliss Retreat in beautiful Loveland, Colorado. The Bliss Retreat is a four-night, five-day, blissed-out extravaganza where there will be sacred ceremonies, spiritual workshops, and nightly services with me, Crystal Ann Compton. Go to theblissretreat.org to learn more. I hope to see you there.